Let's take a look at what's coming up on this edition of LFD On Call. We take a look at our new ABLE training facility in Burnsville and find out what it took to build such a structure. Since the 1980s, the communities of Apple Valley, Burnsville, Lakeville, and Egan have teamed up to operate the joint training facility in Burnsville known as ABLE. After years of training among the four departments, the buildings were falling apart and it was decided that something new was needed and plans began on a replacement. Last fall, the old structures were demolished to make way for a new state-of-the-art training facility. Construction of the new structure finished up this past summer and a ceremony was held with representatives from all four cities marking the opening of the new ABLE training facility. Yeah, the building is excellent. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, one of the state-of-the-art buildings for the area and certainly the region. So our firefighters from all four cities are going to have the ability to use this facility to train in every single scenario they can come up with in a residential or commercial or industrial setting. We have all that here now. In, in our previous facility, we couldn't do that. So our firefighters are, are going to be more prepared and more trained uh, than they ever were before. And so we're really looking forward to that and, and what this building is capable of. Today we're here at our new ABLE facility in Burnsville, and I'm with Quinn Hudson of CNH Architects. Quinn, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Chris. Glad to be here. All right. So first of all, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, CNH Architects? Absolutely. We uh, CNH Architects is a uh, commercial architectural firm based in the Apple Valley. We do a lot of work around uh, the South Metro, but around the state, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, and so forth. Yeah. We've been around for 50 years, and uh, I've been. Uh, with the company for 26 of those Fantastic. and I'm one of the uh, two principals. Great. So have you ever built a building like this before? Not just like, uh, not like this. This is definitely uh, one of those uh, that we really look forward to uh, learning about and, and working together on. Okay. But we, but we have done a lot of fire station work and other municipal projects. Okay. So with a building like this, speaking of working together, have you ever worked with uh, several cities all at once too or something like that. Um, we have worked together with some cities but never four at once and this is really quite an amazing uh, approach and I think that it's just very wise for the cities to work together and provide a facility like this that it really makes good cost benefit uh, for all four cities. Okay so then four different cities divide you know a cost instead of... Absolutely and then okay. sharing the training you know as you know you know you need Firefighters need uh, 12 different uh, recertifications every year, plus other skills that you need to keep honed, and all the stations need those things, and this is a facility to help do that. Okay, excellent. So what can you tell us, when you, you say you haven't built a building quite like this before, what challenges did you have when it came to actually designing and creating this facility? Well, knowing that we've had a lot of fire experience, but we still haven't done a, a burn building before, we went and, and searched and found uh, Roger LeBeff out of uh, Eon and M's, uh, stru uh, structural engineer out of Virginia. Okay. And they are really specialists in uh, working with burn buildings, particularly uh, the Class A like this. And uh, they've done, in fact, over 60 uh, buildings in this type. Okay, so you, you actually had to go to Virginia to find people to, to help you with this one here. Yeah, absolutely. We wanted to bring some of the best people in to, to work with us you know, to do this so that we can provide the ABLE communities really with the, the best uh, burn building you can get. Excellent. Fantastic. So what can you tell me what I, what I might see that's unique or, or well, new? Well, I think really particularly compared to where you were before with the smaller you know, tower and burn building, you have a lot of scenarios that you can create with this burn building. Uh, it can, depending on where you enter and, and how you go, it can mimic a, a split story residential, a residential basement, residential attic. You can have apartment, apartment hallways, commercial buildings, garage. Mm -hmm. You really have a lot of variety in one building location. Yeah, because I know the last building that we had, actually there were two, two buildings in this facility yes. that were very limited yeah. and, and pretty outdated, am I right? That's correct. And the other two buildings, the burn building itself only had two rooms. And so it was pretty obvious to all the firefighters coming that the fire is going to be one we of those two exactly rooms, you know, right where to go. Yep. With all the rooms you have to set fires in this facility, it's just a multitude of opportunities to create different scenarios. Okay, great. And then we can also do search practice in here as well, correct? Search, rescue, uh, so things like repelling, uh, ladder evolutions. You can uh, you know, do hose uh, maneuvers and going up and down stairwells. There's a, there's a uh, standpipe that you can use like a commercial stairwell. Okay. There's a, just a variety of different uh, training experiences you can get in the building besides the burn itself. And also you mentioned that this is a class A type building. Now there are different types of, 
of buildings that you can burn in, correct? Yeah, absolutely, and that's one of the things that our team you know, talked to the different cities, the ABLE community with about was whether it would be a Class A burn building, which is a, is a wood fire, as you know, or a gas burn fire, which is a much lower temperature and gives you a different uh, training experience. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Class A is really, you know, the decision that the, the group made, and, and I think it's going to really serve you well. And that's where we just bring pallets, pallets, straw, trees, something, straw bales. Yeah, yep. we'll just throw and those in there and light yeah. those up, right? Right, and then you get the smoke, you know, automatically. You're getting much higher temperatures, which are more, you know, realistic to the fires you would have uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, out in real practice. Excellent. So, so what are we actually doing here today? What do we have to do to this building before we put it into play? Absolutely. Today, you're doing some uh, early uh, setting burns that cure the tile that are inside the building. Uh, they're controlled burns at a, at a uh, relative temperature rate. And you have to do that in all the spaces so that it's then cured and ready to go. So Quinn, what are some unique features of this type of building versus maybe some other burn buildings that you saw? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the early decisions that we made to do uh, to, in the construction of this building was to use a uh, exposed exterior concrete poured superstructure that uh, supports the building and then use sacrificial concrete block walls. What that means uh, is that the concrete block walls throughout the building don't support the building, they're just infilling and creating the rooms. And then as you burn them, over the years and many burns, they start to deteriorate a little bit and it's a really relatively inexpensive replacement of those walls. Versus the approaches where, the, uh, the other main approach really is to have a fully insulated building with very expensive insulation tile. Mm -hmm. And then over time when that gets, you know, deteriorates too much, it's very expensive to repair. So okay. this is a very economical way to get a, a burn building. Okay, so just looking at what we see here, what uh, what are we looking at that might be? Well, some of the first features you see is the double door here represents a, a garage. Okay. And you know you could do uh, scenarios that would involve a garage fire. Okay. Uh, there's also some sprinkler heads in there, so you can have some live sprinkler heads just to see you know how that impacts the, the facility. The stairwell down there is is uh, kind of a split entry uh, stair and goes into a, a, the residential part of the building, and that's one of the features we see. And as you start moving up the building, you've got, uh, you know, the different balconies, you have uh, uh, windows that you can go in and out, you know, with ladder evolutions, uh, the sloped roof representing you know, more of the residential side, the flat roof, the commercial side. Okay. All right, Quinn, so what is this part of the uh, facility that we're looking at right behind us here? Uh, this is an outdoor classroom building. It replaces what was just some open bleachers in the past, but this is a place for the firefighters after they've done a, a rotation, you know, through the, in the firefighter building, to the burn building, come over here, uh, relax, maybe do some training with the whiteboard, there's some teaching uh, capabilities here. But, uh, you know, take your gear off and, and uh, just wait for the next uh, rotation. So, yeah, this would be a great debrief area. With I didn't see that whiteboard before, but that's fantastic. All right, Quinn, so now we're up on the roof of this new facility and I see a lot of different features. What uh, what are we looking at up here? Well, first of all, we are looking at uh, roofs, as you mentioned, both a, a sloped roof that would be typical for residential type construction okay. and a flat roof that you'd see in commercial. We have two openings, both for uh, ventilating the roofs or also uh, creating uh, breach exercises where you can open these up, break through, and uh, access the lower levels and a potential fire uh, you know, through that locations. Over in this uh, sloped roof one, we have, uh, you know, uh, where the gates are, you could open that up, you could uh, get the ladder up here, you would put a roof ladder, hook it over the, the wood triangle up here, and access the, uh, the breach uh, exercise area there. Excellent. So what about, uh, what do we have up here on this level? The upper level there is uh, you know, a fourth level, so you can also use that for accessing and, and practicing ladder truck evolution coming out the ladder, exiting to that. Obviously, there's some safety features here you wouldn't have in all the burn location. You don't always have access to nice railings and stuff and tie-offs, mm -hmm. but we certainly want the experience to be safe as well. Exactly right. So what other features do we see in a building like this that we might not have seen before? Well, certainly one of the ones that I think is interesting is you have a whole stream closet where you ha can shoot the a water gun uh, into this window. Okay. It, the whole room is lined with steel plating so that the you know that high pressure water doesn't you know eat away at the building itself. So we're talking about 
uh, water off of the tip of the off ladder, the, absolutely, or maybe a deck gun off of the engine itself. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So it's just target practice, basically. It's target practice. Yep. Excellent. But okay. You know, it's handling that water and giving you a shot to do that where you're not deteriorating the building. Okay. And then I noticed also a pond out back. What is is that part of the facility too? Absolutely. With all the water that you uh, use to put out the fires, we need to collect that water and we want it to settle out because there's be some particulates in it, mostly you know ash from the wood burning. Mm -hmm. uh, but that settles out through there and then it infiltrates and, and you know cleans the water. Uh, as it moves back into the, the so we're environmentally system. absolutely safe as well yes well Quinn thanks for coming out today and uh, giving us a quick tour of uh, this amazing new facility that you uh, you guys designed and built for us wonderful I really my pleasure to do so and I really hope it uh, serves the uh, community as well thank I'm you sure it will thank you very much thank you Hi, I'm Mike Scott, Egan Fire Chief. Welcome back to another episode of Burning Issues. Today we're going to be talking about our ABLE Fire Training Facility, which is located in the city of Burnsville. And I have two guests with me today. One is Pat DeOy, our Deputy Fire Chief, who's in charge of fire training. Thanks for coming back, Pat. You bet. And then Quinn Hudson, who's with CNH Architects. I knew I'd mess that up. <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining us today. Absolutely. I think, you know, we toured a lot of different buildings and we came up with this design, Quinn. And I should mention too, um, before Pat was talking about it, it was two separate buildings. We decided in the construction process to combine the tower in the burn facility to try to um, get as much value out of it from a cost standpoint, but also um, add value from a training standpoint to have the, the stairway connected to an actual building. Right, that gives you the opportunity to have the fires at many levels to uh, work with it both, you know, with hose advancement, also with the, the ladder and a lot of variety of things because of that. So can you talk about the, the core structure of this, Quinn? I see cinder block, but I also see, you know, some poured cement. Yeah. The uh, approach in the building was to use a poured concrete structure, so there'd be columns holding up concrete floors and concrete roof. Um, and then the infill of the cinder block or the uh, concrete block uh, that you're seeing here um, are really non-structural. They're not supporting anything, um, which allows us that really unique approach to use them as we call a sacrificial block. That it, over time, we don't have to protect it because it's not supporting the structure. We can let it deteriorate over you know three, five, eight years, as depending on how much you burn in any particular area, and then you can cheaply uh, replace that uh, cinder block wall. Compared to some of the other approaches, we have to protect every aspect of the building at a very expensive uh, per square foot cost. And in the building, as as the the video is going on, it, it looks like it simulates a lot of different things. Pat, do you want to kind of talk about what we tried to? replicate with this building? Well, we tried to, <clears throat> to have multiple levels so we can simulate, like this one here, um, simulate going into a basement through a basement window okay. um, and fighting a basement fire. Um, sometimes the fires, if they're in the basement, are some of mo our most dangerous fires going down stairways. So um, this is a, one of a, a connection, like you'd see a standpipe connection for hooking our hose up to multiple levels structures. So high rise, um, you go up to the eighth floor and hook into your water supply. And Quinn, what were some of the other um, some of the other challenges or some of the things that the fire chiefs wanted in the design that uh, ended up being in this? Yeah, facility? certainly things that were important, a lot of variety of spaces. Uh, so we have areas that are more like residential, split entry residential, we have apartment levels. Uh, we have the slopes uh, roof areas and tr uh, that you would have in a truss roof if we have flat areas. Um, of course, we always have uh, safety in mind uh, in, in doing this as well. So we have you know, the railings around everything, including the roof structure. Um, and then, of course, the, the two stair towers, one exterior, one interior. So here is just a different type of balcony. And uh, you can see, Pat, that's what you're talking about for the straw and pellets? <coughs> yeah, that's um, one of the um, setups for conducting a live burn. Um, so you'll see the straw in that will we'll inject the smoke in the room. And then the pallets will, um, you know, build the heat up into the room. Heat temperatures can reach, you know, any close to a thousand degrees, and um, some some of the burns that we do. 
Quinn, we have a hole in our roof. Yes, you do. Uh, that, that's a, a simulation for training, and as, as you well know. Uh, in the, it's an area where you can put plywood in and, and break through it and create vending, ventilation uh, experiences both in flat roofs or we also have one in the sloped roof. Obviously, when you're putting fires out, you get a lot of water. So this is an example of a, of a spot where the water you know, flows out, a uh, scupper detail uh, out of the room, so it's not collecting and ponding in the, in the space. Also here, you're seeing a lot of the, uh, the tile that are on the walls uh, as you, you know, come up to the right-hand side here. Are these, and that's the protection to the walls that are, that are bearing. Uh, those tiles are really important to separate the heat from the, uh, the bearing con uh, concrete portions. And this is just another <coughs> look at a, a hole in the roof with the sloped roof. Yeah. And then what's, what's this? Uh, those are, are concrete uh, cords of trusses uh, to simulate walking up in an attic because it's very important to step from cord to cord and from truss to truss. And so it's a good experience for the firefighters to do that while they're, uh, you know, all the space is filled with smoke. And Pat, you mentioned smoke. I mean, obviously we're gonna have smoke from the, the straw and the pallets, but what do you mean by inject smoke? Well, at, at times we have machines that we can inject smoke and then, um, you know, we set up and, and educate and train on ventilation. Um, sometimes we cut holes in the roof. You'll see that in films a lot. Mm -hmm. People cutting holes in the roofs. Um, that's to get the heat and hot gases out of the structure as soon as you can. So, and here's an example of a ladder truck. Um, yeah. going yeah, you're coming up to the sloped roof portion of the building, and and the ladder, you know, acts as this is third story up. So it, it gives the, the a spot where the ladder can actually appropriately reach. And uh, but you saw railings too for safety. So we were trying to you know make it while well, learning as, as safe a spot as as possible. So to get all the way up to the roof map, four levels. Fourth level at the top of the tower. Okay, absolutely. So repelling exercises and that kind of stuff would be off the tower. Yes, it would. And here you can see, uh, you know, you're on top of the roof structure, and there's um, consumable wood there that we can train our firefighters in venting with chainsaws. And, um, so you and cut it out and replace it. Then. Yeah, yeah. This is the access up to that four-story part of the tower. Yeah, and you, as you mentioned, you can bring the, as you can see the ladder coming up there, but you can also fall off the side um, and try a lot of, you know, some of the other training aspects that you could have in, in more commercial type buildings. So ro rope rescues and pulling equipment up. That kind yes, of absolutely. And I, I, you mentioned commercial building. That's obviously one of the things that we also wanted to replicate a little bit, but we, you know, could, couldn't do it in a smaller building. So, yeah. what's the, the window open there? That's your, uh, your hose uh, target, uh, and that's a, a closet that's lined with a steel plate where you can shoot your, your, your heavier uh, hoses in, into um, the hose guns and you know, use that as a target of practicing without damaging the building. So even a ladder truck or, or hose on the ground, we can actually shoot the water in there and, and mm -hmm. uh, practice deploying and, and actually having a target versus just shooting out in the field like yeah. we do yes. sometimes. So. Right. Uh, really an interesting building. I mean, you guys did an excellent job in designing it. Great. It'll serve the city well. It'll, it will.